Do you want to learn how to build a high quality farmhouse table? Stick around and I'll show you how. Hey, I'm Mike with woodshopmike.com and today I'm going to show you how to build this farmhouse table. I have plans available for this build so you can make one just like it. Now this table will break down into six pieces for easy transport. It has threaded inserts to make sure you don't strip out those screw holes during assembly and it has breadboard ends on the tabletop. Alright, well let's get to the build.
So now I'm going to cut the breadboards flush with the side of the table. And my favorite way to do that is to use the correct plunge saw. Right now I'm working on the vertical post for the table base and this is the piece that that center stretcher will locate into. Now there are a few ways to make this piece and put this large mortise here in the post. The easiest way for my shop setup is to just actually glue these four pieces together. Now this can be a little bit tedious because as I'm sure you know glue does sometimes make things slide around while you're applying the clamping pressure but I'll show you what I do to help keep the pieces from sliding around while I'm putting the clamps on. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay out where these two center pieces need to be on my board. With that marked, now what I'm going to do is lay these two boards with the glue surface up and then I'm going to go ahead and apply the glue. To help prevent squeeze out on the inside of the mortise here, I drew these lines here that are farther apart than what I want my mortise opening to be. And the gist is I'm just not going to put glue past this line. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to move my piece to the corner of a bench so that way I can work at both ends. Uh, and I actually start with some uh, trigger clamps or quick grip style clamp. And then once everything is in place, I replace those with parallel clamps so I can really put a lot of clamping force onto the assembly. So when I'm putting on these first few clamps, I'm trying to apply just as, as little pressure as possible. All right, so also you see this clamp right here. I kick that at an angle to pull this top board and the middle board back this way. What I've done is I have one surface here on all these boards that's jointed and uh, this is my reference surface. So I'm trying to get all my boards lined up on this front surface. Um, to make the glue up more accurate. So at this point I have moderate pressure on each one of the clamps and uh, it all the pressure is pretty even and this front face is pretty pretty flat. It's not perfect but it's really close uh, and that's what I'm going for. I'm not going to try and fret and make sure that it's absolutely perfect because I will still be doing some machining on this face and this face to bring it down to its final dimension in this direction. So uh, at this point I'm now going to start putting some of the parallel clamps on to really apply a lot of pressure.
All right, so there we go. We have one of our leg pieces glued up. The mortise is the proper dimension. And what's nice about making these marks is I don't have to continue uh, grabbing the ruler or grabbing a tape measure and double checking to make sure that everything's going to clean up to the correct final dimensions. So what I'll do is um, I'm going to still keep an eye on this for about 15 minutes before I uh, set it aside. and Just keep an eye and make sure that these pieces do not shift so that way if they do move I can delaminate things or adjust as necessary to make sure that the piece glues up properly. Now I'm going to cut all the dominoes and the pieces that make up the base of this table. And you'll see for some of the pieces I have to set up a straight edge instead of using the flip down fence on the domino so that way my mortises are right on the center line of my board.
At this point, I'm ready to counter bore and drill holes in the stretchers that are going to attach the table base to the table top. To do that, I'm going to be using threaded inserts and joint connector bolts. I'll be oversizing the holes in the stretcher to allow for wood movement for these bolts. Okay guys, now it's your turn to build one. So make sure you grab those plans that are linked below and let me know what you think about the project. Thank you so much for watching. Ah, oh, you're still there, awesome. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I got another one queued up for you right here. And if you want other awesome content from me, check out those. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe. And until next time, have fun making something.